Hi, it's Brian here from Niche Advice. I thought we'll talk about some of the most commonly asked questions by first time buyers. We're talking about how much you can afford. We're talking about second jobs, it's really important. We're talking about commissions, overtime, how lenders see all of those. So um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. If you have, like and subscribe, share, and obviously comment below, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Common questions asked by first time buyers. Let's go through it guys. Um, first time buyers, obviously they're all new to this, okay? They'll be watching things like this on YouTube, they'll be reading a lot of blogs, maybe they'll be making inquiries with brokers. But um, I get, I come across some uh, sort of basic questions and I thought, well, do you know what? I'm just gonna put it out there and let people uh, work this out. The first question is, how much can I borrow? Well, the how much you can borrow is very much dependent on your circumstances. It's basic stuff, really. How much you earn, how much debt have you got, how much deposit have you got, uh, how old are you, that's important. Um, student loans, don't forget about those. They're seen as commitments. Pension contributions, sometimes they're seen as commitment by lenders. So it's to do with your circumstances, okay? The general rule, if I have to be really general, really, really general, it's probably around four and a half times income is your maximum. Okay, uh, it depends. If you're earning more, you might get to five. Uh, I've just actually put a video out there um, that will allow someone to borrow up to five and a half times income with only 10% deposit. But you do have to be a professional. So watch the video. Uh, I'll leave the link up there. So, so you know, four and a half times is probably your max. Um, but you know, it really depends. Um, so that's one question. Second question is, can I get a gifted deposit uh, from anybody? Now, the general rule is um, a lot of people can get gifted deposits from family members. A lot of lenders say blood relations, mother, father, brother, sister, grandparents, okay? But there are lenders out there that will allow you to get a gift from anybody, really. So it can be a friend, um, it could be a distant relative. So it's not just, you know, that. There are some lenders that will allow it. Generally, they like the gift to be in the, from the UK, um, but you know, the gift can be, and that answers my next question, can it come from abroad? Yes, it can, as long as the, the right steps are taken and the right documentation is provided, okay? So that's number two. Number three is around uh, disclosure, okay? Um, I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you a couple of scenarios, honestly, and this is like yesterday's conversation, just take one day. How old are you? Um, uh, does that matter? Why do you need that detail? Well, we're going to need to know how old you are, what your date of birth is, because the mortgage term, uh, often, if you're going for a residential mortgage, is determined by how many years you can take that over. It's a very different affordability calculation to take a mortgage over seven years or 35 years. So it's very, very important that we need the right level of information. Often I get, uh, I get emails come in where we send an inquiry, people make an inquiry, we send them a form, an inquiry form saying, look, can you get this completed? Because I need some basic information like your date of birth, what you want to buy, what deposit you've got, are you going for help to buy your normal mortgage, first time buyer, next time, you know, basic stuff. And they go, can I have a conversation with you first? Because I want to know what, what I'm doing. I said, well, if you fill that in, at least I can give you some proper sort of information rather than some wishy-washy chat for an hour and you know we find out at the end of it that you know you're on ten thousand pounds a year and you want to buy a million pounds so um yeah it's it's worth you disclose information it, it, it really does help uh, process and it will be easier and faster for us to process your uh case um okay so that's the, the next one uh, talk about help to buys um uh, this this really is not help to buy but i suppose first time buyer general Am I classed as a first time buyer if I bought a property and sold it? Well, no. If you are from a, uh, if you basically are showing on the land registry as owned the property in the UK, then you are a next time buyer. If you own anywhere as far as the, I suppose the government are concerned, the HMRC, if you've owned a property anywhere around the world, then you're classed as a next time buyer. Okay, so you're not a first time buyer. Oh, well, how does that affect my stamp duty? Well, go and have a look at it. You know, we can probably give you a uh, quote when we send you a legal quote, but you know, we're not, we're not, you know, I'm not a tax advisor, but I will tell you 
if you've owned if you're showing on the land registry as being an owner um, oh but i sold it 10 years ago well you know you own the property on the land registry so yeah i, I get that often and that is uh, linked to obviously now help to buy is for first time buyer only so i get that question quite a lot am i seen as a first time buyer or not so um yeah so i would say go and speak to the help to buy people and see what they say in my opinion um you will be classed as the next time buyer right the next bit is around disclosure of um commissions okay it is vital at the moment in this current uh, climate um, is really useful for you to disclose your commissions and probably send through your six months pay slip now often a lot of lenders will ask for three months pay slip um, but I like to have six months pay slip because there are some lenders that will work up to six months now some lenders will take 60% others will take 100% some will take 30% some will take none so depending on where we end up going loan to value affordability all the other bits and pieces we can then determine so if you are earning anything as a commission as a bonus as additional income is vital you disclose that and also how often do you get that is it monthly is it annually is it quarterly because that will have a bearing on affordability also uh, second jobs okay really really i'm getting a lot more second jobs at the moment now general rule with second jobs is a lot of lenders would want you in that second job for six months far too often i get a client on twenty five thousand pounds a year and guess what last month they've got a second job on 40. okay those lenders want to see a track record with second job some lenders would want 12 months track record okay but there are a number of lenders that will do it for six months okay as long as there's no link between the family so it can't be your uncle employing you. If it's your uncle employing you, then they would want 12 months uh, track record of that employment. Generally, they don't want to see a big jump before you go for a mortgage, okay? So they would want to see that you've earned that money, the, the, taxes, the taxes have been paid, your national insurance contributions have been paid. But the rule for second jobs is generally six months in that second job. Now, different lenders have got different rules on second job. Some lenders will only take 50% of that income. Others will take 100% of that income. And also, it's important that you link the second job. Are you a hairdresser for your first job and a computer scientist on the second job? Well, those two things don't go well together. But if you're a computer scientist and maybe a locum IT developer, then those two things work together. So some lenders will make that link, others will not. Others will just say, look, you know, if you've been in your second job, and also from a second job perspective, from a risk perspective, because second jobs are seen as riskier for lenders, okay? Because they believe that, wrongly or rightly, people are often putting in second jobs um, to inflate their income, go for the mortgage. And then give up that second job and there is data by lenders they will track data they have historical data where they will look at the number of applications that came in with second jobs and then after they got their mortgage they may do a check six months or a year afterwards and how many of those people have still got their second jobs okay so they've decided a lot of the lenders out there have decided that second jobs are risky so what you will find is a lot of those cases tend to get vetted more closely so it's vital you're in your job for six months it also makes sense if we have some uh, rationale behind it so you know the second job is with tesco's for example large employer okay makes sense so you know that sort of stuff is vital you have that discussion with the broker because we can then um, because we've got we see these type of cases all the time we can then say right okay based on your scenario not just the rate not just the criteria but because of your second job I think we might be able to go with this lender because they've got a maybe a manual way of looking at these type of jobs okay so be mindful around second job it is it is quite common um, common one of the common reasons why people get declined because they haven't been in their second job long enough um, that's about it really guys hopefully you found this useful um, I'll what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, uh, leave a link below to uh, our inquiry form if you're interested and I'll catch you on the next one take care the content of this video does not constitute giving advice it's purely for information purposes all cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker as a mortgage is secured against your home 
or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.